So guys, we have some good news and some bad news. Deliveries of the new Model Y has officially begun and owners in China are preparing to pick up their brand new vehicles. However, some of these vehicles are not exactly as what we had hoped for. Some of them missing major components that will play a big role in the overall ownership experience. Jumping straight into it, Tesla has long used LTE 4G modems in its vehicles, including the latest Model Y, the Cybertruck, and the refresh Model 3. However, all three of these models now appears to be transitioning over to the 5G capable modems. This shift marks the very first time for Tesla and the upgraded modems will be integrated into the newly manufactured vehicles as supplies become available. This new hardware listed as the telematics control unit TCU Generation 2 was identified in Tesla's electronic parts catalog by well-known user on X that goes by Green the Only. Ever since early 2018, all Teslas have been equipped with Generation 1 modems, which provides LTE connectivity with speeds ranging from 20 megabits per second on the lower end to a peak of 100 megabits per second under optimal conditions. Now, while this is sufficient for most applications running in your vehicle, this modem is now being phased out in favor of the next generation unit with improved capabilities. This new generation 2 modem, as recently discovered, will enable 5G speeds up to 1000 megabits per second. While its full potential will be mainly realized in urban areas with dense 5G network coverage, it will also provide improvements alongside the 4G network in well-developed suburban regions. This upgrade is expected to enhance connectivity, reduce latency, and support more data-intensive applications making Tesla's in-car internet experience a faster and more reliable. So at this moment here, you're probably wondering why the need for even 5G if all the applications are running flawlessly, there is no delay, there's no hiccup, no stutter whatsoever. Now the truth is, that is generally correct for the most part as most of the applications running in your car don't use anything more than 20 megabits per second. That includes Netflix, YouTube, and even Zoom meetings that require a ton of bandwidth. But here's the thing, the future is going to require a ton more for data intensive work. That means vehicle to vehicle communication, Grok integration, and everything else required for autonomy. On top of that, it's gonna be all your background apps such as the ones we've mentioned. All of this combined is going to surpass that 100 megabit per second threshold that the LTE modem currently on older vehicles can support. Added to all of that, where you're gonna see the most benefits going from a 4G to a 5G modem is when you're in highly congested areas. This could be a football field, a shopping mall, or anywhere where there is a cluster of people. All of this is going to be extremely critical once every vehicle becomes autonomous. It will need to communicate from vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to infrastructure, to communicate with the roads and the surroundings. All of this is going to surpass even the bandwidth that's available on 5G networks today. Now going back to the main topic, during a brief transitional period when Tesla updated its production line, the company installed some older components while awaiting for the full ramp up of its updated version. This approach allowed the production line to continue uninterrupted as new parts become available. This meant that early batches of the new Model Y may come with either a Gen 1 or Gen 2 TCU, meaning buyers won't know which modem they're getting until after they've received the vehicle. Green the Only later was able to confirm on X that both the LTE equipped Gen 1 modems and the new 5G capable Gen 2 modems are valid configurations for the new Model Y, suggesting that Tesla is implementing the upgrade gradually as supply allows it. While Tesla now sells this part directly to customers, the EPC or Electric Parts Catalog doesn't list a price for either the LTE or the 5G version. This is because they require programming by a service tech and must be linked to the vehicle's VIN. Now although the hardware swap is relatively easy for owners to do themselves, it cannot be fully completed without the necessary tools and the SIM card specifically coded to the vehicle. This is why pricing hasn't been confirmed as it will require a visit to Tesla service. 
In the long term, if 5G support becomes essential, you may be able to request a TCU retrofit from Tesla service in the coming months as supply improves. While Tesla has not officially announced a retrofit program, it is possible that a more capable 5G unit becomes available and the company will offer it as an upgrade option for existing models. In the end, all of this is done to ensure better connectivity for vehicles, lower latency, and improved performance for future software features. However, until Tesla confirms pricing and availability, it remains unclear when or if owners will have the option to upgrade. So there you have it. Just to be blunt, Tesla has decided to hold back on the 5G modems for early production vehicles, specifically on the Model Y Juniper. This is why I had always recommended to hold back on any initial batches to see if the company has worked out any bugs, any kinks that they could have spotted in the early builds. Now that they have ramped up not only the Model Y but also the specific component, they are offering it on the EPC or the Electronics Parts Catalog. So you can eventually get this in your car if you bring it in there's an issue and they have to replace it with the newest version. Now of course, unless that happens and somehow your antenna or your modem fails, you're probably gonna have to stick with what you're given. And at this point, it's quite hard to know if you have the 4G or the 5G modem, unless you pull down your headliner and play with the board and check out for specific serial codes. All of this is available in the link I'll drop in the description below if you wanna compare and see if you have a specific version of it. But as of right now, it's probably safe to assume that if you have your car without a VIN number and it has not been built yet, you're gonna take delivery sometime in March. That is when Tesla has fully ramped up the new 5G modems and this is probably when your car is going to come included with it. So ultimately, now with their shift towards a 5G connectivity, they are wanting their car to be the most connected vehicle on the road. And this also hints towards the new and upcoming Starlink's connectivity direct to cell service that T-Mobile has been hinting and has been previewing all this time. This is gonna be eventually connected to the SIM card and probably going to require this 5G modem to fully function on the newer vehicles. Of course, at this moment, we are unsure of anything. The 4G is still extremely capable and still extremely fast for today's standards, but we already see the future moving towards the next generation chip, and that is probably what most of you guys are after. In either case, whatever they plan to do, I hope moving forward, they are gonna keep older vehicles in mind and steadily make retrofits possible for them. Even if it becomes a paid version, I'm sure a lot of owners are willing to fork out the money to make their car last even longer. I will be keeping a close eye on everything that comes up regarding this and everything else that comes up in the Tesla realm. So I would love it if you guys stick around Hit that subscribe button at that bell notification if you haven't done so already. And follow me on Twitter or X at HeyJohnE. You're going to see things over there you're not going to see here. And you guys can chat with me anytime and I will respond as quickly as possible. This should be it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is John once again. Peace out.